Yeah, you're not allowed Welcome to. Welcome to Waiting Room. <laughs> oh, it's we're back. Life. And we have Turtle. And we're, <laughs> yeah, it, it's just like that. It just woo, turns on. Woo. How have you been? Great. How are you? How are you how are I've you seen guys? you around with Shopify. Mm -hmm. Shopify's been great. Coaching the team, hanging out on the sidelines, losing week one. You know, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot to mention one thing. What? It was your damn birthday yesterday. Yes. It was. It was. Woo. I'm 29 now. Let's go. You're old as hell. Woo. <laughs> I love that picture. Yeah, yeah, it's really funny. What'd you end up doing yesterday? I was just hanging out, watching a movie, just chilling, eating dinner, going to sleep. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like more low key first? Because for me, I just don't generally tell people when it's my birthday and I do nothing. I don't really That's, celebrate my birthday. I just play I video games. Historically, I just play video games and yeah. just like, you know, yeah. have yeah. a blast playing League or something. <laughs> yeah, uh, there is some, there's some tape online, though, of what else you've been up to. Yes, yes, uh, it's, a, it's a video Shopify film for us. Check it out. Let's go. Basically a meal, we challenged Wild Turtle and Tomio to grocery shop with a $25 budget, but what they didn't know was that they had to make a meal out of their purchases. Let the best shopper win. All right, let's get a basket. Yeah. Specifically it, it, uh, blueberries. Why are these ones so large? They're like GMO. Your favorite type of cold You know, I'm just gonna get roasted turkey. Call me weird if you'd like. Part of the challenge is to make a meal out of your materials. You have 20 minutes and your time Whoa. starts now. I'm gonna put them down individually. And that's it, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, the final product. Hello, hello everybody. It's me, Mr. Turtle. And here is my dish, the wild turkey. The thing about a pumpkin chocolate chip is, uh, well, I just wanted to get some chocolate chips at the grocery store. And the raspberries, a great source of uh, fiber and vitamin C. And you know, this blueberry that's GMO'd out of its mind, so I'm sure it's also pretty good. So I got the proteins from the Cliff Bar. And let me know what you think. Ooh. <laughs> that's pretty solid. Is that salami <laughs> wrapping the cookie? <laughs> It was a pumpkin cookie. I didn't even know what I was getting. I thought it was chocolate chip. It just yeah. happened to be pumpkin. <laughs> you ate it, right? Yeah, I ate it all, all of it. Good? It was fine. It was okay. Pretty small. I just didn't expect it to be pumpkin flavored. I was I, a bathroom I, trip I, afterwards. <laughs> 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 it would not be a good trip. <laughs> I knew it was over when you spent half of your budget on coffee. I was like, oh no. Oh. <laughs> I didn't realize we had yeah. to like make food. With it, they, food. it was a bait and switch. Yeah, yeah. it was a bait and switch. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Anyways, new patch. Uh, we'll see what teams have been cooking up because we are on the live patch. We're the only professional league major region in the world that will be on 14.3. And see that little dragon? That's uh, Smolder. I see him. Oh, Smolder. We can play Smolder. Today? Today. Nice. Teams can play Smolder or a Rallying Soul. Hot fix to Rallying Soul. True. Yep. But they've had just as much time to adjust to this stuff as the people at home. We gotta pick all the dragons now, like Shivana, Aesol. The like full dragon, dragon comp. comp. Yeah, full dragon comp. Get Good really idea. into it for Year of the Dragon, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Dragon Fist Lee Sin. Let's look at the patch notes. <laughs> let's, 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 let's look at the, at the overview of what's happened so far. Because obviously Smolder's been released. Aesol had a bunch of changes. Mm -hmm. Karma Ezreal nerfed. What stands out, uh, Emily, to you so far in the patch? There is back. Or she might be back. Uh, <laughs> she? Yeah, well, uh, we don't know. I mean, she was kind of getting picked in like some outlier cases. Uh, and then obviously, I'm not going to necessarily take what happened in NACL yesterday uh, because they were actually the first minor or like development league yeah, uh, on smolder. the patch. Yeah, but they're also in fearless draft, so it makes sense. Uh, mm. This is obviously uh, one of our best Zeri players in the league right now in Berserker. And people are kind of wondering with the Zeri buffs to this patch, um, whether it is enough for to see something like this out of C9, because historically this has been a champion on which Berserker has been able to showcase his team fighting prowess. Uh, as you see, she had base eight debuffs and uh, a cooldown reduction on her ultimate. So, um, I mean, I, I think Zeri was kind of getting picked in outlier situations mm -hmm. anyway with the metric, like, ton of bot lane bans we've seen across the board. These are really um, solid buffs, but also I think the items, um, like the Kraken Slayer and the Static Shiv is actually a really good addition to. Like, Static Shiv losing 300 gold on the purchase price is pretty, pretty amazing to get for her. 
Yeah. And you, you want to build that early on, Terry? Yeah, you just get it, and then you can farm even faster than before. Mm -hmm. um, a little questionable about the hex play. I don't know if it's a good item on Ziri quite yet, but I, I prefer getting Navori second still. So. Do you think she's in a good spot right now? Yeah, well, I always kind of liked Zeri. I don't know if you... If anyone's been watching my streams, but I play Zeri like 24-7 almost, so... Oh, then you're perfect for this. <laughs> yeah. really fun. If she ends up coming out. Yeah. Um, for me, uh, like, it's going to be interesting with a lot of, I guess, newer things being thrown bot lane overall. Like, yes, we already talked about Smolder coming through a weaker laner overall, and I wonder if people are going to prioritize the pick and if they can protect it. Uh, to me, the patch changes that I'm interested in is actually, like, the Karma nerfs. Um, mm -hmm. Because... She was thrusted into the meta with pretty large ratio changes to make her uh, pretty difficult to deal with, at least in the draft. Because people expected immediately that they would be playing Karma mid uh, with Malignants, uh, maybe even like top lane. But a lot of teams ended up flexing it to the bot lane with Ezreal. And so the buffs to Ezreal, the buff to certain items, like uh, to like, I guess the... Um, Essence Reaver items in the previous patch, like it made it so, oh, suddenly this is a really good lane to play. Yeah. But I think she is still in a good spot. I still think you, it's really difficult to draft against a team that's willing to three-way flex a Karma. So mm. even though it did hit her, I think she's still in a good spot. Yeah, I think last week Karma was more banned than picked. So yes. like, we yeah. only saw it bot lane, but it was banned in almost every game. So I don't think Karma or Ezreal are necessarily dead. Like mm -hmm. when I yeah. look at the win rate magnitude on like the stat sites that you see online, they didn't do that much to move the needle down, especially if teams were practicing it last week. Uh, really quickly, I do want to, we have the graphic now, I want to pull up the full patch notes to give like a brief overview of the number of changes and the number of items that were actually hit, yeah. because Turtle, you already mentioned that the itemization is going to be changing mm -hmm. things. Uh, so you can see like the system changes up at the top right. Huge amounts of item changes, a uh, decent amount of nerfs, a lot of buffs, some of the adjustments they say adjustments when they're not really they're, sure Oh my god, happen. the Alawi ones are buffs, guys. Because I'm sorry. Sometimes it turns out to be a massive buff. Like the Maokai one as well only hit his win rate by like 1%, so I think Ole's still going to be a support there. One thing I want to zero in on, though, you can see up uh, in the buffs, it goes Aesol, Middley, and then Pike. Busio. So, yeah. Busio, he won Player of the Week last week, so he was riding high. Uh, he gained some followers on social media by basically saying that he will pick Pike if he gets to 10,000. Oh, he got to 10,000. There it is. And he had this to say. He's gonna pick Pike, right? Thank you guys so much for 10,000 followers on Twitter. Hope you guys are excited to see Pike this weekend. Again, hope you guys are excited to see Pike. <laughs> These are the Pike changes. Uh, a lot of line items. I think overall it's a, for me, a fairly minor buff. The E damage going up is much later in the game, so mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to have a, of a massive impact. I'm actually just a little curious. Turtle, so. as the coach, Shopify Rebellion, do you like that they're maybe sleeping on Shopify a little bit, saying they're going to play Pike, making meme videos about it? Does that, the task at hand to beat Shopify Rebellion today? I mean, I do hope they pick Pike, you know, like, I don't know if this champion's that good. It did receive some buffs. The W one's pretty big, actually. I think this uh, movement is speed time. is actually pretty large. Um, but yeah, I hope they do pick Pike and we can punish it. All yeah. I'm saying was, I was watching some solo queue games. I saw an Ayla Pike in solo queue. I'm just putting it out there. People are practicing it. Okay. Lucio's trying to make the case to Nuke Duck. A few supports just want to pick it because it's fun. <laughs> and also yeah. the buffs look nice. And I mean, I, he is really fun though. It's like really hard to kill and you can just kind of walk wherever you want, take all the wards. It's pretty enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. And I will be unfollowing Busio if he doesn't pick Pike because that was the deal. Same. He said if he gets 10,000 followers, he's going to lock it in. So he better. This do. week. Uh, one final note on the patch Nico is disabled due to a visual bug. It was introduced in 14.3. We asked League Offs because we wanted to describe it. They said, we're not telling you because we don't want you to go in solo queue. Damn. So just know that yeah. we're not going to see Nico. I wanted yeah. to abuse the bug. That's all we know. We just we don't all know. Did. We uh, all did. In addition to the patch changes, remember Smolder is now enabled in the LCS. So let's check in with Jan and Masu for a rundown on Smolder. Hey guys, it's Jan from Team Liquid. Hey, I'm Masu, FlyQuest ADC, and here's some Smolder tips. The very noob-friendly tech with Smolder these days is Comet, Manifold Bands, Absolute Focus, Scorch. This is very easy to get out of lane, because in my opinion, Smolder is a very scaling champion. He's not very a lane-heavy dominant champion where you want to like brute force and duel people and fight them. I thought his laning phase should be pretty weak, but then, People discovered that you can just start W and go Comet and start Doran's Ring. 
And now I'm not so sure if his lane is weak. So when the lane comes out like this, your main goal is to push the wave as much as you can because your cooldowns are very long and hit them as well as you can. So let's say they're here, then you want to W here. If they're like here, you want to move a little bit and push like this. But in this case, you push like that. And then you have a really decent wave clear, so you can just do this. And because of how wide it is and how like hard it is to miss, you're basically guaranteed to hit like somebody in lane, which gives you a stack. And keep in mind, you don't, in my opinion, you don't want to auto trade that much because you don't have like a high AD with this. There's always one secret mechanic that people fail to recognize. Like one very small, very, very small one, like a lot of people will use this, is like you can like glitch out of a wall anytime. Like let's say I'm hovering this wall, you can like keep glitching back and forth towards the end. So you can like utilize how much you're actually hitting them here, like one, two, and then leave at the end. Because it actually ended here, you know? I try to like see their numbers in game, see how strong they actually are early game, how hard do they scale into late game, and how easy is it to transition. I think the damage is very strong, but I don't like that it will lose a lot of duels. I think how much his ult does was pretty surprising at first, because if you hit the center at like level six, it does close to like 300 damage. I think the ultimate is very strong. Like, look how far it goes. Mom. These are my thoughts. Thanks for watching. Smolder. Are we gonna see Smolder? That's kind of all chat they wants to know. We will for sure see Smolder. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. You're guaranteeing he it. Yeah. Some scrim leaks. Is sanity gonna. Oh, uh, I do have scrim leaks. That's <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, again, it is fearless draft, so obviously certain things get banned out. But we did see uh, a bunch of Smolder in the NACL mm -hmm. yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, specifically, Smolder mid seemed to end up being more successful than Smolder bot right. of like the sample size. Um, but teams were more than willing to lock it in because once you hit 225 stacks, you actually just take over the game. Yeah, and when I was looking at some of just the solo queue data, uh, there are a lot of optimizations with the champion. Like, being able to know the damage of your Q to stack faster is a massively important optimization. So, yeah. depending on your your elo. So, like, it, basically the highest winner it was diamond, then emerald, then gold, then silver. In terms of how good you are at smolder. So, even the diamond I saw is already up over 50% for a new champion. Mm. Which to me is like, alright then. Yeah. Like, we're, we're almost certainly going to see it once I, once I see that. I personally don't know all the optimizations yet, but what, what were you going to say? Yeah, I was about to say, because like, with the, the filming that we had right there was actually, it was last week. It was last week, week when so, it just released. Exactly. So I'm sure their opinions have changed on this one, even to the point of like the rune changes. Like for me, I, I saw uh, PTA as a pretty nice rune because Q procs PTA, at least it has one single proc on it. So you can auto Q auto and you can get the PTA proc instantly. So like, what's your experiences off of playing and seeing? Um, after playing Smolder myself too, I think the Meteor build is just more OP just because when you land that first W in lane, it's just like 170 damage. Mm -hmm. And it's near impossible to miss like W is just, you're a noob if you're missing it, I'm sorry, but it's just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. pretty easy to land And right if you now. hit champions, you get a stack. Yeah, yeah, you get a stack too, so that's okay. a strong part. I see a lot of people doing like um, three points in W and the max in Q. Yep. So that's uh, pretty popular right now. Because one thing I did learn, and I'm sure everyone probably knows this by now, but once you're three points W and you have 25 stacks of Q, you W the back wave Q once, you mm -hmm. get three stacks. Yeah. Every single time. Mm -hmm. So you push fast, you get stacks fast. Uh, Emily, you mentioned that yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty stacks. sure you can do the same thing because, like, we were watching LEC earlier and we are yeah. like, whoa, Senna got a lot of souls off the mites. Basically, I'm pretty sure each of those counts as a stack. Yeah, the little baby tiny Krugs yeah. all give you a stack as well. So yeah. you can go kill Krugs okay. and get, like, 8 or 10. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like, it's like 20 minutes until you're at 225 stacks. So it's really hard. Can, like, when do you fight? No, I think, like, at least with the scrims I've been watching, too, it takes around, like, 25, 26 minutes to get, like, mm. fully stacked, too, and there's a lot of action. So when you get pulled away from, you know, farming the creeps, it can and be And how weak hard. are you before 26? I personally think it's a pretty weak champion. It, it's, like, it specializes in, like, kind of, like, zone controlling and yeah. just getting, like, a good ultimate. Mm -hmm. Man. It's gonna I be think tough. I think Fleet is decent, but mm. I, the comet build makes sense. Yeah, I don't know if Fleet's that great. I, maybe yeah. I need to play. It's just it a like sustain. More. It's just yeah. like depending on how how rough you think the laning phase is gonna be. Do you think it's gonna go any other lane? Because uh, you're right about there being a lot of people trying mid lane. Uh, I actually, when I was 
watching and doing a lot of my research, I was like watching Nemesis and he thinks it's broken, but also he's just playing it a lot through mid. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, so it's interesting to know that it's just, it can be used as a flex pick. And I think that will teeter it over to being abused in uh, mm. competitive. Yeah. If people are willing to flex it as, as much as they uh, think it's good. When I was checking the stats, highest solo queue win rate was bought. Mm -hmm. And then it was yes. about 3% lower in mid and in top. Yeah. Um, but Lorlo has been streaming it a lot in top against like melee matchups and he's like oh you get, get to scale for free mm -hmm. and he's like he's still pretty bad at it <laughs> like if you watch him in team fights he's just <laughs> wow. running he, he, he knows he is like yeah. he, he's running around doing dumb things just kind of having fun and he's still actually finding a decent amount of success because a lot of those nice. games get derpy he has 225 stacks and it's just like he accidentally kills people like once you get to 225 <laughs> stacks yeah. you really you do just no, press you, yeah. it does so and it like just, the spray is so wide i hope we see it so we can see once you get to 225 because the difference and the amount of damage you do is just insane yeah i think we should have like a counter to see who's getting it the fastest to oh, oh, we we should. Should. Yeah. take over a fast five category yeah, maybe okay uh, let's check out the standings as we move in to the second half of the spring split regular season fly quest two games clear of the pack at six and one we got a lot of four and three teams immortals three and four three games out of first that's one more game out of first than okay. last week and shop fine dig in seventh place. That's your one IMT so far yep. today. <laughs> you yeah, always have to mention how Immortals is doing because a lot of people thought they're going to be last. And look, they're not last. Anyway, schedule today, uh, they could be last if things don't go well because they play up against Dignitas in game two. Obviously, we got the championship rematch once again. Energy versus Cloud9 in game one. Turtle will be joining the cast for that one. So definitely check it out. And shop fire Rebellion versus FlyQuest, who I'm really curious to see who Wild Turtle picked in that game. But we'll see. <laughs> That at the end of the waiting room. So, the top story though, yeah. last week, as we saw from the standings there, is there's this like super team. I heard we had like a super team in the LCS. I heard a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I heard, I, I heard they were Cloud9. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but first, I messed up the toss. <laughs> we gotta take a look at what we've got on deck this week. Smolder. Smolder? Smolder, smolder, smolder. Smolder. Smolder, smolder, smolder. Smolder. Yeah, smolder. 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 Guys, smolder. smolder. Guys, 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 stop. Okay. Smolder. Oh, smolder. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Mom. For getting into the second half of oh, the round robin, oh. the biggest shocker we have is Cloud9 being fifth. Castle coming around from the side. Blabber and Fudge into the back line. Mudge is here in the front. He's not going to be taken down just yet as Castle kills Blabber. Fudge dropping low. Jojo's dropping lower. Ole got him. Immortals are crushing Cloud9. Quest are absolutely steamrolling him. It's five dead bodies. Cloud9 are crumbling. DL in the base. And then Cloud9, their fourth straight loss. I'll just say it, C9. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. It's banger. Yeah, like. A little rough for them, for sure. They're a little bit too lost in the sauce on draft, and they're not actually working as a unit to like get wins. They're just playing their own champions and hoping the game works out. After this game, maybe we should just stick to Fortnite, so. FlyQuest, they're loving it, man. Their jerseys are like the holographic Pokemon card, and these guys are Charizarding the league right now. Five and one. And Matsu's gonna have to flash out of there. There's the Heartbreaker from Exu. Exu trying to finish him off, but Matsu is kiting out. Matsu is still alive, and on the other side, it's Jensen taking over the fight. Berserker under pressure, having to flash away, but Bustio's ready to follow. Berserker's barely hanging on, but he gets buried underneath the anchor. Berserker and Vulcan dying in the 2v2. Matsu makes sure he gets them both. Here comes the damage, and oh, the ulti by Nico pops up. The Callista, and he gets taken. Taken down, AO being pushed back, and the Emperor's Divide multiplies the kills, and it's a triple heading on over to Masu. FlyQuest, our number one team in the LCS, 2024, looking to be their year. Hello, and welcome back. Uh, I am going to start because we're going to kind of go around the table here at the LCS Lounge and talk about what's going on with C9. Uh, so I picked Draft because it's the thing that everyone is talking about. It's the thing that everyone is always talking about. These are a few of their team comps and wins. I think 
This NRG one, right off the bat, the last time these two teams faced, they're gonna face each other again today. It's kind of the platonic ideal of what this C9 team can do with Flabber on a carry, uh, Jojo holding mid, you have uh, a pushing Varus, and then maybe Fudge doesn't like it, but uh, he was one of the best Udyr players in terms of understanding yep. what to proxy, when to get to the rest of the team. Um, they also had a really nice Nocturne and Orianna combination there. Um, and then we're gonna go team comps and losses because that's actually what everyone wants to talk about. Yep. Uh, <laughs> this one, I actually will defend the Vayne mid. This was into uh, the Scion as my sleeves always troll me here. Um, but I think the big thing with a lot of these compositions is that it comes down to execution. So obviously they had a bot lane play with these two that went not so great in that draft and then i think the one that everyone is kind of talking about because with c9 imt i actually thought it was because imt very smartly picked ezreal and bard mm -hmm. into this lane um and i actually thought that was a really nice as well as the ivern was just constantly negating whatever tris wanted to do in mid um, so that's more of an execution. And then the big thing here is I think everyone kind of finds this draft as the most egregious one. And for me, it's actually not about the Lucian or the Milio. It's about how this draft works into what TL had, which was a massive range advantage with Ziggs here. Um, so I think like for me, it's less about these drafts in a vacuum and a lot more about execution and then also what they are picking them into. Because in the TL thing, even if you are giving that draft the benefit of doubt and you're like, we have players that can execute this, I think it's a lot more difficult to execute than what TL had. And I think for me, a lot of the clues for why they have struggled on stage showed up in early weeks and I, I'm not surprised that this ended up happening the way it did. So let's just let's just go back a little bit and look at their goal graphs in their wins and their losses. They're very one-dimensional games, right? Like everything in the wins is up and to the right and the majority of the things in the losses are down and to the right. Uh, because th th this one Immortals game, they just ended up getting outscaled and that was like probably their most competitive game. But what I mean, what I mean to show here is that they're very one-dimensional games. They started off very well in the first three games. They lost the last four. And I think the drafts are one part of it because they're picking highly early game, you're gonna run over a team type drafts. And that worked for three games, but when you make mistakes with that, it goes very poorly. So really quickly, I have one example of just like, just to remind people, here's one where it worked out well, right? So their, their first game against 100 Thieves, a gank in the top lane against Sniper, they get a 2v2 double kill and then Right afterwards, as you can see, they even chunk out Quid. And like, you can actually just straight up win a game off of a play like this. And it's basically Fudge throws the lane in the right spot. Blabber knew they were winning the 2v2. They kind of just hands diffed the opponents. But this is like a 2000 gold swing, as well as about half a level on everyone. But this also had the bad side of it. One example was bot lane against FlyQuest. This happened last week. It got completely blown open because Busio landed the nice hook on a Berserker. Berserker was in the too aggressive of a spot. They killed both of them. They ran it back. They killed both of them again. And then because they don't have that many tools, they ended up just getting snowballed out of the game. So the long-winded way of saying this is I roughly went through all seven of their games and tried to see what their tendencies were. And this isn't going to be 100% accurate because this was just my opinion. But to me, they had better scaling in one of seven games. They had equal scaling in one of the games, which is why I have 1.5. I thought they picked pushing lanes in 17 of 21 possible pushing lanes, which is ridiculous. And the hands diff definition would be, where did I think they straight out outplayed or got outplayed? And this one would be too low for the amount of talent they have on this team, because when you're picking these win lane comps, you actually need to consistently hands diff your, the other team to be able to get wins. So they're not picking themselves tools. I think it's because they're running over people in scrims. They're not getting the same leads on stage. And that's why we're in this current predicament.
they had against Alabama uh, overall. So the play that I wanted to showcase for us is Unit, going here. Oh, sorry, I believe your mic died, Raz. So Hello, he's been talking to us, I promise, but now he's yeah. got a hot mic. Okay, so just piggybacking off the bad plays for the both of you guys, the botch dive on, against Shock and Rebellion, and then on top of that, what you mentioned, the 2v2. This is another example, the most recent example versus Team Liquid, where they're going up against uh, a Rick play. A Rick play. Can you guys hear me at the time? I'll just keep going. So we just rolled this here. As we just rolled this here, it, the mistake has already been made here. As you look at the minimap, we have eyes on Udir on midwave. And as you can already see, both APA and Umpty are challenging Jojo Pion and Blabber on the Rift Herald. So a mistake has already been made when both Vulcan and Berserker are opening up on Core JJ and split themselves. The TP is coming in from Nar, but he's going to be here as you can see. So the ideal play for Berserker, Vulcan, and Jojo Pion are to walk up. So he's able to participate in the play. It's going to be difficult for Impact to even come in. He has to walk through the NAR to make it happen. And as I clear the screen and just show you what ends up happening, they walk away from the NAR. Easier access from Impact to be able to just maul uh, the back line of Cloud9. And as you can tell, Fudge comes into the play too late. So first thing that I wanted to focus on is if you're committing to the Rift Herald and you're man down, you must commit as a team and walk away as a unit. But if you're going to take the fight, you have to involve Fudge in the play, and we've seen it in basically every game where it botches. So those are things that we need to look at when they go into this game, which is as simple as execution. All right, we're going to be setting it to stage in a minute, but first, let's check out the predictions. Wild Turtle, you can go up there because you got to get ready to cast. Oh, yeah. But yeah, but let's, let's check out the predictions for today. All of us saying C9 is going to bounce back. Let's go, Turtle. Wow, we are Standing by today. your team. Discord with a 1% edge for energy in this game one, but the uh, the Cloud9 faith runs strong here, apparently, and Wild Turtle could not go against his team. Hey, respect to the Discord for actually going for NRG. It's a 51%, yeah. so yes, just sir. a bit. Uh, after party after the games games today, so make All sure right, you stick around for that. that's it from here at the cool lounge. Stuff. Let's so send now, it up to the casters four. to get in to game one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the LCS here in spring 2024. A happy Lunar New Year to all y'all. We are about to have some more fun here. It's Saturday. We're kicking off the second round robin of this split, and we're doing it with another rematch. Energy versus C9. I'm Captain Flowers here with Kobe and Wild Turtle. We got the reigning champs looking to stand tall in a rematch against that super team now in free fall. After that, Dig and Immortals are going head to head in a battle to climb the standings in this split where anybody can take down anybody. Game number three of the day is going to see the battle in the top lane with the new generation of NA talent squaring up against the old guard of the LCS as longtime rivals 100 Thieves and Team Liquid throw down. Finally, we're going to wrap it all up with the mad scientists of the LCS having to cook up something truly special if they're going to take down one of the strongest teams in the league for Shopify versus FlyQuest. I'm Flowers. That's Kobe. This is Turtle. Gentlemen, let's do it. Let's do it. Oh. And a happy delayed birthday. Yesterday was Wild Turtle's birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, buddy. Give me a present. I got you a cast with me and Flowers. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And hopefully these guys are going to bring you some top level gameplay here for this. Remember the first time that we saw these two teams go head to head to kick off the split, it was pretty one sided and it was one sided Cloud9's way. Yeah, I want C9 to win just because, you know, I <laughs> like JoJo. 
<laughs> uh, I also I was talking to Cloud9 members because they were just in makeup at the same time as me, and I was going over patch notes, and I was like, oh, they buffed Zeri. And Berserk was like, we're going to win world! His favorite champion! <laughs> so, fingers crossed, you know, maybe they'll get their hands on Zeri, or maybe the Smolder yeah, as well. Smolder today. Yeah? yeah? I think so. I, I feel like it, uh, the scaling is so good because you can get to your 225 stacks uh, pretty early in the game. At least by 20 there minutes, most then. people have been able okay. to do it. Yeah, we did see uh, last week as well, you know, a, a tiny bit of Darius coming out, Whippo uh, trying his hand at it, so maybe it's made its I way through the scrims. Well, still one ban to go on cloud Nine side. They could just take that off the table if they want to. I feel like if Energy's going to ban out Darius, they're kind of saying, yeah, we will slam Udyr if you don't ban it. But C9 going to focus on the Twisted Fate instead. So Twisted Fate, Ash, Ivern banned out by C9. Energy getting rid of the Tristana, the Ori, and the Darius. Douglas with the classic hover of his action, keeping us in suspense for the first pick. And it, yeah, it yeah, is yeah. that Udyr priority. Who could have guessed? Yo, we also looked at the, you know, the in the Cloud9 victories, two of the three games were Fudge on the Udyr. It's just a champion that is so useful, uh, pushing up into enemy jungle and taking over territory. But now we're looking, we still have this magnifying glass on the bottom lane. And I feel like Cloud9 have their, have their pick here for Berserker. All right. Do they go ahead and lock in this Varus? Yes, they will. Okay, this is something that I was kind of Hoping to see some of, it's not Lucian for C9. They definitely had some rough performances on that. They're gonna put Berserker back on the Varus. What is Vulcan gonna play next to him to ensure some 2v2 success here? That's what I'm wondering. Well, looks like they might be going for the answer into the Udyr first. To me, I haven't been a huge fan of the Cassante into the Udyr, but there are a lot of magic resist first items you can rush now. Uh, yeah. The Hollow Radiance helps you with wave clear and uh, is decent magic resist uh, for the for the Phoenix form. So a lot of people have been going that route and just having Cassante as the answer for later. All right, let's see here. Hey, <laughs> since we have our pre-recorded drafts, we get the Cloud9 chance during. Uh, they just got out of their practice tools. Everyone yep. was practicing up a couple of special matchups here and getting the hype ready. So we've got the Senna locked in here for energy. FBI and who he. Not shy at all about playing the Senna Tom Kanjip. It's a draft where they feel like it's a good pick to go with. Let's see if they want to go ahead and lock in that second half or if they have something even spicier planned to pair good. with the Senna. Yep, I wouldn't be surprised at all. There it is, TK locked in. How do you feel about Senna TK, TK lanes compared uh, to traditional ones? Well, Senna's got like a new build right now. She doesn't go like the support item anymore, like as the first item. So she's probably going to start the D-Blade and start farming a little bit and potentially buying the uh, support item on the first base. But okay. I've seen it being skipped overall too, so... We'll see. If you were playing for Cloud9, um, what would you want to pair with Berserker's Varus into a Senna Tom Kench? That lane so has so much like, healing. Yeah, it's a little bit difficult to find a good support. I think Milia would be a decent one, maybe potentially Renata as well. So that's probably what I would go for. Yeah, Renata definitely has a good Renata counter or engage. The well, now yeah, the they might also want some engage. Yeah, also important to uh, keep an eye on what's going to get banned out. The Hue banned out by C9, thinking, okay, maybe they've got some sort of uh, some Hue tech cooking up against the Azir here in mid lane. The Azir was locked in before we got to the second half of the ban, so we'll see what energy wants to look at here. The Orianna, remember, was already banned out in the first half of the draft. They definitely need, you know, some good uh, DPS mage here for Palafox. I know that Talia got buffed on this patch. Both Palafox and Contracts are big Talia players, mm -hmm. so it could be a big flex pick for them. Uh, jungle slash mid lane, and Talia is very commonly a pick into the Azir. Azir has a lot of answers now since it's the most picked champion, yeah. uh, but the Talia definitely is an option there. They might take the Corky, but Corky just got nerfed recently, so mm, yeah. there's a potential for that. The interaction between Eclipse and Malignant's being removed, so you don't just automatically get the get the proc with a single rocket. Akali banned out. Karma, who's now a multi-flex pick, banned out. Hue, that can often be played in mid lane. Sometimes other places, but you mostly see him mid, banned out. Lots of mid focus, but the final one will be that Melio, one of the options you were talking about that could be a good pairing with the Varus. The Renata is still there. We'll see if C9 wants to go for that. They still have to pick both that support and jungle. Which one are they gonna leave for last? My guess would be support. Counter pick definitely has a lot more value there, but we're already seeing the whole bottom Hard. lane here with the uh, 
send a TK, so they lock it in. Wow. Okay. Now, Bard has been going with a super tanky build, too, so it's one of the most annoying supports for the rest of the map right now. Um, getting out there, and we'll see if Vulcan, Vulcan can actually split up his time and try and, uh, try and help out with the grubs, try and help out Blabber in controlling the rest of the map early on. Hmm, energy were one of the classic combos of having Powell Fox on a kill-oriented mage Talia. when you combine it with the Vi, and that's the one I was talking about, the Talia buffs coming in yep. hot. I know both these players love this champion, and when you have a Vi, guaranteed setup for the seismic shove for Talia. That's a, a classic kill combo for energy. It's like, Whoa. It, let's see. We've been it's already good seeing it's good some here. picks of this. If C9 wants to go for it, they could lock it in. Sejuani. A little bit less <laughs> exciting. Yeah. I, I hear audible groans yeah, from the crowd. <laughs> Brand, come on. They wanted to burn it all down. Brand did get some pretty substantial nerfs. They didn't completely like kill the champion or anything, but it did bring him a lot more in line. They slowed down the clear a little bit yeah. uh, with some of the Brand nerfs on this patch. And so uh, Blabber going to go with another tank. Cloud9 have not had great success with him on tanks so far this season. Yeah. They got all their wins when he was on, you know, DPS type of champions, but they are going to have a very, very beefy front line, especially if Vulcan also builds tanky. Um, you know, Cloud9 with very much a two threat composition here. So Turtle, let me ask you, to seeing all 10 champions locked in, which one of these drafts would you rather be playing? Now? I personally would rather be playing on energy side. I I just think it's much easier to execute. Like the fly into the Talia combo is just very easy. Uder has prio. I think Balling's gonna have prio too. So it seems like they have two shoving lanes and a Talia that can run to either. I, I I would give the early game to energy right now okay. for the, the comp. I definitely agree because I like having the you know the ball in your court, so to speak, and energy, they're the ones that have a lot of the options for proactive moves. You know, Udyr topside too should have full control there. So contracts and Powell Fox are definitely set up in this game to be the ones to make some early moves, try and get those those early kills. And then later on, even if Vi goes too deep, you have a Tom Kench on your team uh, to, to save her as well. So I feel like they, they have a really good way to execute on team fights. Cloud9 though, obviously really good scaling there with the Azir. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they also Can't have count out the Azir. Can't All right, is that what you're doing if you're Cloud9? Because what I'm about to ask you is you guys are giving me the whole movie trailer for this energy protagonist <laughs> moment here. What if you do with your C9? What do you do if you're trying to stop this loss streak and respond to this draft? I think for C9, they just have to get JoJo in like a comfortable position to okay. potentially push waves and get the free farm. I think when Azir gets one or two items, he can definitely hold on to the game for them. I'm a little bit worried for Cloud9 because in a lot of their recent losses where this team is kind of unexplicably begun to free fall. They have had a lack of proactive plays. And in this game, it seems like that might be the case again. Of course, they do have Bard and they do have Sejuani who, who can make some action early. So maybe they'll be able to get something going. Definitely need to have, uh, take a little bit more control than they have uh -huh. so far this, uh, this season though. Woo. All right, let's get into it. See what goes down. Cloud9 trying to fight back after a disastrous super week. I believe we have the numbers for how long it's been since this team has lost five games in a row. 2,774 days. That's uh, seven point something years. Uh -huh. <laughs> a very, very long time, but Energy have the opportunity to make that a reality here today. You guys have already been talking about how you expect Energy to be able to control the early game, and C9 is going to have to find some sort of response here, because you can see their upcoming schedule is not going to be easy. Minions Definitely does not swung. get easier from here. They did win the first time this season, though, versus Energy. The first game of the entire split was a Cloud9 victory. Um, back in the beginning when mm -hmm. they were still a super team. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how super they're feeling after this one. I'm gonna have a lot of eyes on this bottom lane in particular, Berserker and Vulcan. When Berserker throughout a lot of last year, the year before was being talked about as just the bar for mechanical excellence in the AD carry role, him and Vulcan having some rough laning phases, some tough 2v2s last week is 
Doku's just trying to annoy these guys. The awakened glacial attack from Udyr is very obnoxious. Blabber losing some extra HP there. Is, even though it was a 2v1 defense, Doku can still trade pretty even. Yeah, the North American Udyrs have been really, really good at this. Constantly uh, starting out to invade enemy jungle, getting them a little bit behind. There's some early bot action. Well, yeah, who he's hungry, but Vulcan can get away. There we go, one last lick, and stun them. All right, Turtle, walk us through the early stages from the point of view from the Senna Tom Kench. Well, for them, they just want to, like, keep the wave pushed. Oh, they're going to go for an all-in right here, too. Yeah, looks like it. Berserker taken low. Vulcan even lower. Below 200 HP there on the support as Energy's Got duo out of, uh, verse. immediately establishes control. Yeah, Energy just has to maintain this control now. The lane is pretty much over. I, I don't see how Barbaris is going to get back into this one. All right, constant push on bottom side. Sejuani is passing down towards bottom, and Contracts actually just did his red quadrant and is coming for an invade now. here. Okay. Let's see if he runs into Blabber. What sort of jungle violence we get here in this blue side quadrant for C9. Instead, they may just try to turn it into a dive. The wave about to crash into the turret. Vulcan and Berserker hitting level two. Contracts coming in, looks for the Vault Breaker, and he breaks Vulcan's jaw. Now Berserker oh. under the pressure next. A little bit more damage is required. Oh, oh. no, it's some goofy plays coming out from Energy oh, no. as who he just barely gets away from the turret shot. It ends up being a one for one trade. Yeah, Contracts just needed to back out and like reset the tower aggro there. Oh, oh, Berserker! He's about to drop! Oh, oh. Ooh, he's coming in! What about the oh. tongue? He flashes! He misses! Oh, oh no. it's frog legs for dinner! Goodbye! Good night! Berserker gets paid! And FBI drops again! Energy! I don't even know what the hell that was! All As right. Dokla versus Fudge continues with the 1v1 in the top side, but Dokla's fast enough to get away. It's a 3-1 to one game before four minutes. Well, Flowers, we wanted, <laughs> we were looking for Cloud9 to, to bounce back and have some early moves. It actually is fully reactive, though. It's not yeah. even them being proactive on the plays. It's, it's energy kind of spoofing the dive here. Now, the first kill is perfect. Oh, shit, it's just that when he goes for a little bit more here. Back out. Yeah. Definitely, uh, you either got to just commit to it and and get the kill on Berserker under tower and sacrifice your li life there because they had the ward up by blue buff uh, to see the path down from Blabber. But then, yeah, once who he goes off in for it, it's very difficult to redive unless you reset the tower aggro. So yeah, it was a pretty hasty play from Contracts there. And I think, I love the fact that you brought it up. It was reactive, Kobe. This is one of those ones that energy, they full force the whole situation. And now they're going to suffer the consequences for it. Still only about a 500 gold lead for C9. So not like they lost massive minion waves or anything off of that. But energy now also has the push mounting up again. You can see all of these minions piling up here. It'll be another big wave crashing into the bot side turret. Top side is Udyr being Udyr, as you might expect. Tough to lane against him. Very, very strong. Been kind of the premier go-to pick that there's not really great answers into so far. Nice Wombo combo back in the mid lane here. Jojo tries wow. to get away, but Palafox is ready to knock him down. Blabber, seeing him, maybe there's an angle. Try to get one back on a Palafox. Throws out the W, doesn't find a ton, just a little under contract, but the burst power of Sejuani, not usually that scary. Blabber's Ooh. coming in, but Palafox barely gets away. Contracts and Palafox really seeing how far they can push this one. Blabber ends up forcing the flash of the energy mid lane. This game's extremely high action. Blabber is not done yet either. He wants to steal away the chickens. Contracts knows he's there, but he's only got 200 HP as the Vi man. He can't go contest. Yeah, Blabber's a pretty beefy pig here. He got both of the early kills. Who he wants to get something back though? Going for the Abyssal Dive, but Blabber can just jump out of the way. Arctic Assault clears the distance, so nothing more to punish or catch here for energy. Yeah, but Blabber getting two of the early kills off the Tower Dive to the early Bomby Cinder means that he's able to bully in, get a little bit of counter jungle back since Contracts had stolen away his Krugs uh, preemptively before that fight even turned out. Maybe this means they just use this priority to start up the Dragon. Blabber's going to leash it out right now while Vulcan and Berserker push up on this bottom wave. And they have JoJo pushing in mid lane too, so... Be a free dragon. It's very important for energy to get, uh, start stacking the grubs as early as they can in this game because they have the Udyr top. Should use that to their advantage. So you'd just rather see Grub Pryo over early Drakes, anything like that for energy's side? Well, for energy's side, yeah. yeah, I think so. Get that split pushing going. A little bit more value, a little bit easier. Now you can see a ward inside that grub pit, though, placed down by C9 as they take the Drake, so they can at least be wary 
if Energy is trying to do those cross map trades. Palafox level six here on the Talia. I always want to see first Talia ultimates result in some kind of a big movement here. It's similar to something like a Nocturne where it's long cooldown, but you have so much presence from somewhere else. I want to see him affect the other lanes with it. Jojo with the push right now. And Palafox still looking. Since Jojo had to use his uh, flash the last time they got the kill on him too, as soon as Contracts gets to level six, I think it's going to be a repeat Contracts gank in mid lane. Okay. No flash on the Azir. Ultimate into Seismic Shove. Look for the kill combo again. Contracts, if he's able to get the Grubs, those things do give a lot of experience. The Grubs going to be hard. Blabber's yep. Blabber Blabber already six, level though. six. Blabber. Yeah. Blabber having the edge with that level six is a big difference maker. But he's just happy to start off with the chicken camp right now. Contract secures the first grub. Moving on to number two. These are not going down exceptionally quickly. Yeah, but Udyr's got so much prio on topside. Uh, constantly pushing here. Is able to make sure Blabber will secure the grubs for energy. So on Turtle's checklist for energy. Okay. <laughs> they, nice. They've, uh, they've corrected the game from the early dive. Should be able to get all three. Oh, uh, they see Sidroni here? Yep. Oh, well, they're gonna go all out. Fudge is oh, gonna bring no. Dokla into a 2v1 before well Contracts can even make it over. I feel like, man, you can never, ever forget about where Cassante is in respect to the terrain, or you're gonna end up in a spot like that. Beautiful stuff there. Able to bring him back into his own pocket next to his jungler. But here's the repeat gank. Uh, towards mid lane, Jojo slides into tower, no problem for him. Yeah, he's not worried about that one. Even even with the thumbs up, that's the, yeah, the gank's not gonna do anything. Okay, see you later, I'll blow the E cooldown. C9's in a pretty prime position now. What do you want to see him do from here? They just need to maintain and make sure Zira can push waves safely while he has no flash right now. Alright, so they had a poll in chat. Who's going to bounce back from Super Week? Because both these teams had a, a little bit of a rough Super Week. Cloud9, obviously, more of a rough one. Mm -hmm. But chat sided very slim margins for energy. Okay. If you're looking at it right now, Turtle, which side are you on? Game's still pretty close. I'm still on energy side. I feel like they still have the uh, the strong Vi Talia combo. I just want to see it happen. Well, Blabber right now, just making sure that he maintains presence in the jungle, trying to put down a couple of control wards, just trying to keep an eye on where this enemy jungler is going to be. Stop contracts from finding those ganks, finding that point and click guaranteed engages. Dokla goes to proxy. Yep, Udyr doing Udyr things. He's got two turret plates already on the top side of the map. You mentioned the grubs, the extra pushing power there, extra gold value, help out with the splitting later on too. But Vulcan's now out onto the map. Not quite level six here yet for the Bard. Very, very close to get his ultimate for some playmaking. Uh, close doesn't count. He's immediately got to retreat as Energy sends in more men. Now Jojo retreating back underneath the turret. Seismic shove just Ooh. barely not going to find him there. Could have been in some serious danger if it did. But Jojo staying safe enough for now. The Flash just about ready to go again, I believe. Does have the ulti ready to cast too as Vulcan is trying to, again, rotate around, be able to be there, stop any kind of play they're making, but do it carefully enough that he doesn't get caught himself in the process. Contracts on top of a control ward, just waiting to see. If C9 tries to force something, <laughs> he could turn it around. Yeah, everybody in the game knows <laughs> they got eyeballs for JoJo. Flashes back up now for the Azir, though, so it makes it even scarier. Contracts Ooh. is in trouble. Yeah, Contracts getting caught there, trying to use the Thaw Breaker, now turns it right back around onto JoJo's Azir, but the flash out of the way of the seismic shove means Contracts is done. C9 oh. gets the first kill as Vulcan goops Vulcan. the timing. Yeah, that part wasn't great, but the part before it was good for C9. <laughs> yeah, we had m timing misses on both sides because Palfox was not ready to follow up on the Contract's ultimate, so he didn't get the seismic shove out of it either. So there was no counter kill for energy. Another big one here for Cloud9. All right. That was very well played by C9. They just had everyone around mid because they knew that, uh, that the action was going to be there. Now, Energy will try to at least get something back here on the bottom side. Grab the turret plates. Both TPs used to bring the mid laners back into their lane after the scuffle. A single kill on both of them. Only a couple of difference in CS. But one of the biggest differences right now, the Nashor's Tooth. First full item spike completed for JoJo because Palafox stopped to grab the Sorcerer's Shoes instead of fully investing into the one completed item. So JoJo feeling pretty strong right now. But again, without that flash, without an ulti, he's got to be careful because Vi could always be around. Energy bringing up extra players as Vulcan goes on magical journey trying to get away where is energy gonna go who do they decide to chase Vulcan's your target for now abyssal dive coming in to throw him up energy knocks him down palafox gets paid and contract starts up the drake 
Honestly, I, it looked a little bit like Energy were also having the same debate that you were having while you're casting that flower. You're like, which one are they going to Where drink? are they going to go? Well, Palafox flashed uh, towards JoJo, but then they end up getting the kill onto Vulcan anyways. So they do get the dragon. They don't get the chase down onto JoJo, but Doklas right back out onto the map. And we see Blabbers currently on the mini map on the grubs, trying to make sure that Energy at the very least will not get six. And he wants to make sure that they don't get five for the extra Void Mites. He doesn't have Smite, though. He used his Smite on the first one, I believe. Yeah, but this could be a problem. Okay. Like they're going to get five here. Yeah, it's four Grubs. They're going to try to guarantee the Blabber can't steal away Got the last smite. one. A TP is coming in. Energy might just have to abandon it here. JoJo gets stopped by the Unraveled Earth. Contracts and the rest of Energy cannot secure the fifth Grub. C9 critically preventing the Breakpoint, preventing the Void Mites from spawning as Energy does not want to take the fight any further. Definitely like this play too, right afterwards. They just teleport Dokla down to the bottom side, but Cloud9, like you said, they stopped the critical five grub point for that really annoying Udyr split push. Slow it down a tiny bit. Uh, looks like Dokla is actually not going to go for the turret plate on the bottom side. He just teleported down there just to clear out one wave and get his reset off to backside here for Fudge. Honestly, this... The, as a later the game goes, it's going to be really interesting watching. Can JoJo actually work through this kind of beefy front line? Or is the Vi plus Talia plus Senna ultimate over the top combo going to be enough to assassinate him basically through all of this peel right. that, that they I have? Think, on I the think team? it would be much easier for C9 to play if they actually first engage with the Sejuani and the Bard, just so they can navigate the fight easily. Because I think if Vi Talia goes first, it's going to be pretty hard for JoJo. Yeah, definitely very scary, especially with the extra damage of a Senna ultimate coming over the top. Yeah. Uh, that 100% to zero always looks scary when, when he's got a flash. And Blabber's definitely super tanky right now on the Sejuani. Really beefed up. So him leading the charge, maybe if Vulcan is able to get one of those big Bard ultimates to make it easy to land the follow-up. Could have some 3v3 action breaking out here. FBI and Huhi want to step up, at least try to challenge Blabber. They're going to steal away the Grom, but at what cost? Huhi popping the thick skin, trying to get away in time as JoJo's entrance is going to be blocked off by Palafox, but Blabber has already killed the enemy support. Huhi's down, yeah, and down. FBI's about to get knocked out. Berserker takes the kill, and C9's up 7-3. Honestly, I feel like Energy are their own worst enemies. The the biggest Cloud9 plays feels like the defending on the tower dive on bottom and then defending jungle. Yeah. Again here, another big one for Cloud9. Honestly, Energy just needs to calm it down a little bit around this bottom lane. Turtle, talk to me a little bit about this situation. As somebody who's played in a professional game like this, you try to make a couple of plays, they end up backfiring. How do you sort of like reset and get yourself back in a mind state to stop those sort of, sort of mistakes from continuing? I think they just have to take a deep breath and recognize their win condition. They really need okay. to get Talia and Vi involved in these plays. And I don't think they are right now. Contracts. Well, Vi's getting involved in a play, but is it the play he wants? JoJo's yes, getting locked is. down here with a star beautifully done. Contracts, Palafox, and FBI have already found the enemy mid laner, but can they get any more? Blabber with a flashback away, trying to get underneath the tier one turret. As Palafox tries to cut him off here with the Weaver's Wall. FBI needs a couple more oh. shots, but who he's tongue ain't gonna find the mark. Shut down back over to Senna still as Berserker fully retreats, and Vulcan is left to the graveyard. Contracts and FBI both coming right back around. Piercing Darkness fire. Finds him and Palafox goes on a rampage. Woo. Energy, get three. Action packed. I love watching Energy play because even after they fail on the first invade bottom side, then they get right back to it. Another fight, another victory. And they're able to swing the gold lead right back in their favor. Cloud9 with the teleport top for JoJo means that they should be able to at least get a tower in the aftermath, though. Okay, so C9 will pick this up. We talk about sometimes as gold leads being pendulums that swing back and forth. This one feels like a yo-yo. We're just throwing <laughs> yeah, that yeah, thing out crazy. and back and out and back. This game's pretty wild with 13 kills at 16 minutes. Still under 1,000 gold separating the two teams. You can see on this graph here, the greatest distance that it was was 1,674 in the favor of C9 before that three-man play that happened at the hands of Energy in the bottom lane. We do have the Herald alive on the map. It's going to be there for another three minutes or so still and I don't think we're gonna just see it expire this game cloud nine putting a lot of players in the top side river all right I don't think it's gonna stop anytime soon flowers because we got a dragon coming up and energy grabbing the scuttle crab vision first 
They've got plenty of wards here looking out for the Cloud9 members coming to try and check too. Nice job there popping the blast cone. Got the ghost too. Yeah. Fudge has to walk away from that one. Remember that Fudge is entirely MR right now. First item is just a Koenig Rooker. And yes, he has tabbies, but that's not worth a ton on its own. As Blabber and the rest of C9, they see at least two players from the enemy team in the bottom river. They're going to use the opportunity to secure this Herald for themselves. While Energy's got three guys working on the Drake, they should be able to grab that. So a cross map trade in the objectives. c 9s going to look to try to grab some value here from the eye of the Herald. Honestly, them opting for Rift Herald and trying to get uh, through that some of this outer tower gold here for either the Azir or the Varus and, and just buffing up these DPS champs. The two carry uh, comp from Cloud9 with both of them being auto attack based here. I feel like this is definitely setting themselves up for the path to victory for Cloud9. They yeah. just have to be able to execute on this team fight and actually keep those two carries alive. When Jojo and Berserker have flash, it's definitely playable for Cloud9. When they do not have Flash, the energy dive is so scary, though. That that combo with Vi guaranteeing the setup for Power Fox. One of those two carries is definitely going to get annihilated. I think for Vulcan, he just has to look out for his ulti onto the um, Talia when Vi ultis mm. his Azir. So you block the Talia, stop yeah. the follow-up. Stop the combo. And then Azir's ready to fire back. Everybody else works together and kills Vi once she dives in. C9 staying together, staying grouped up. They have to have recognized how energy is trending towards mistakes in this game. If you're grouped up, if you can punish those, energy can just gift you the game. But energy with four kills on Palafox, all my eyes are on this Talia to see if he can get the carry done, to see if he can step up and continue making the types of plays that can deliver them the dub here against Cloud9, get revenge for that first game of the split last month. Energy with control over the mid lane. Gonna push things up here. FBI continuing to harvest those souls. The Senna up to 76, 18 and a half minutes into the game as Energy controls the bottom side river. Yeah, honestly, they're just cleaning out more territory where they can look for picks. They've got a lot of options here with uh, with the Talia ult ready for Palfox to cut people off, but Cloud9 doing their duty here, grouping up again in mid lane, using that Rift Trail, trying to get this outer tower money like we're looking for. There we go. Okay, summoned up, going for it. Turret's already down, but now where's the fight gonna go? Contract's here for the very front. He's gonna be gobbled up by who he to stay alive. Doklo wanted an angle. He wanted a pincer attack, but the Sun Disc summoned up to make sure that C9 had a banner to rally around. Doklo doesn't have an entrance into the fight. Energy's still trying to just regain control over the mid lane on their side of the map. The Sun Disc slowly bleeding out. FBI and Palafox trying to keep Fudge away as he steps forward to establish some vision. Control board down in the brush next to the Raptors, but the chickens are being led on a long <laughs> journey away from their home. Okay, they're finally gonna reset, and the vision gets cleared. Yeah, both Blabber and Fudge are really good for face checking right now, uh, trying to get into enemy jungle, push their, their territory forward, but that's basically the expected value of the objective trade that they saw earlier. You know, when you go for that Rift Trail, you're expecting that's gonna be your mid turret, basically guaranteed with that one. Cloud9 do a good job defending their carries. Um, staying strong here in the five-person setup. C9's in a really solid position right now for this game. I think they're just waiting on Berserker's second item, and they should be good to start Baron as well. Blade of the Ruined King already done for him. As long as he's protected well enough to get those auto attacks off, this guy's gonna hurt a lot. But I'm curious if energy, again, maybe if you can't find Jojo with that Vi Talia combo, you just turn it on to Berserker, blow him up instead. Vulcan's really gonna need to be paying attention here with this bard. Like you already talked about, Turtle. As soon as you see Vi going in, you gotta stop the follow-up. Defensive bard ulti's gonna be key. Also, worth noting, Jojo is going for the Lich Bane second here, because he's got the early sheen. Nice little price reduction on the component item this patch as well. 100 gold off of Sheen. Um, really, really just uh, efficient component now with the ability haste and the proc that's going to give you. But it does mean he's not going to have the Leandries right. for the team fight. So isn't going to have the Leandries for the Tom Kench, the Vi, or the Udyr. But he does have really good burst damage, uh, especially with that auto attack coming out so quickly now with the new Lich Bane. 
I do believe the Lich Bane had the base AD ratio nerfed on it a little bit with this patch too. Mm -hmm. Just knocked 25%. down ever so slightly. Yup, from 100 down to 75. For a lot of mage champions, it's not super impactful just because most of it's coming from your AP ratio anyway. But still something to be cognizant of as the gold is tied, dead even, between these two teams. The Drake is spawning in a little bit over 30 seconds. And they made the call for Powell Fox to push out topside first. Energy again, trying to play the map here. Look at the mini map. They've got bot and top both pushing for themselves. Dragon coming up shortly here. So they've got their side waves correct. They also have the teleport and the ulti ready for Palafox. Maybe they can get that top tower before Dragon spawns. But Cloud9, stay strong. You mentioned it multiple times, but sticking as five with those defensive ultis ready, yeah. trying to stand strong and keep Berserker and JoJo safe. Well, it seems like energy feels weaker right now, so they're just going to give this dragon. They don't even want to fight it. Exactly. They're yeah. just going to surrender it. C9 will grab their second Drake of the game. You can see the Crypt Bloom completed here for Palafox. He went ahead, got the Verdant Barrier second, which I really liked. I think the value of the Spell Shield was pretty high against the composition drafted by C9. But then recognizing, hey, they have two massive meatballs, one of which just rushed Kanic Rookern. He needs to be able to penetrate through that magic resistance, as Dokla's going to see if there's an angle Palafox here on has all, JoJo. Palafox could join. If, okay. Oh. Ooh. All right. The energy has to look for uh, good picks on the side lanes now. Let's see it. Energy's coming in. JoJo trying to get away. Oh. Contracts looking for the oh, chance to go in. Flashes in for the ulti over the top comes Senna, but JoJo gets out. Ooh. Seismic shoving, gonna find him. And Energy could not get the combo executed correctly. C9 gets their mid laner away. Small little windows there in between the timing. Palfox tried to get the there. Here now. Yeah, they're just gonna start it up. C9 going for this, recognizing, hey, that was a lot of resources. That's Senna ult, that's Talia ult, that's Vi ult. That's a lot from the tank of energy, and C9 is burning the Baron down. They've already got it below 6k, below 5k, down to 4k. Dokla's coming in trying to stop him, but C9 wants to burn it. Blabber secures the Baron as Fudge tries to dive into the middle of everybody, and Contrax is controlled. JoJo's barely getting away, a missile dive onto four. Fudge is stuck back in the van as Dokla tries to tear him up, and FBI's grabbing a shutdown. Energy need to find more. Blabber with a flash out, trying to get himself back to the base while still wearing the purple. He throws out the W, but he gets slowed down by the tongue. FBI still trying to pursue him, still trying to get all the way there, but Blabber escapes underneath the turret. It is Baron over to C9, but at the cost of a two-for-one trade. Oh, no! Ooh. Into a pause. Such a good uh, call here from Cloud9, though. As soon as there's no Vi ultimate, and even though JoJo f traded his flash for Contract's flash, they know they have so much Baron burning power with Azir plus the two item Varus with the buffed up, by the way, Rage Blade now on Varus, mm -hmm. melting right through that Baron. So they did get it just in time, even though Energy get there and get a two for one trade, just getting plus one in kills. Cloud9 will be very happy because they also kept three Baron buffs to push afterwards with. What a game, man. This one's turning into quite the banger compared to, like I said, the first time these two teams played this split, it didn't feel particularly close. It didn't feel like it was could have gone either way. But this one is 24 minutes in, two Drakes each, neither side having enough grubs to spawn the Void Mites. Kills are tied. Gold right next to each other. It could still go either way. <laughs> so easy. It definitely could. I got an update. The pauses for Berserker. He had some issue with his keyboard. Another peripheral pause, Flowers. I'm, uh, mm. I'm not too ha not too happy yeah, with not, these, not with too these happy about uh, keyboard one. issues. Maybe yeah, we yeah. need to we need to inspect them ourselves. What's wrong with these keyboards? Game. Turtle has never paused for a keyboard issue. I don't think I have, actually. I, yeah, look at this guy. <laughs> You've been, you're one of the longest I mean, standing players. Great. We got a Pagoda pause going on. Yeah. Here. We got <laughs> Can we get some of those up here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe that's the trick. We bring up. <laughs> oh, man. All right, well, hopefully we'll be able to get back in here soon, whatever's wrong. With, yeah, they uh, just really burned that Nash. They had the Zero and then the Varus with the two core. Uh, honestly, from, from the energy side now, it, it does feel like it's starting to get a bit difficult because Cloud9 keep defending the, these attempts at JoJo's life. Mm -hmm. um, Berserker doesn't have Ghost. He does have Flash. Maybe they go for the kill onto the onto the Varus. Okay, we're going to get I mean, a replay of the last fight. Okay. Okay. Yay! All right, so they're burning down. Really good DPS. 
Contracts is pretty far, so there's no hope of a steal, but Contracts, yeah. look at him charging his ViQ, and he goes straight for the play again onto um, JoJo. Powell Fox set him up. It was a beautiful Talia combo actually into ViQ. So is Powell Fox doing the work, getting JoJo into range, and that's, oh my God. that's the only reason that they even got the two kills. Yeah. Who he just landed a four-man W. Yeah, the, the Abyssal dive onto four there was crazy, because if he doesn't go over the wall, I'm pretty sure that Contracts can't hit JoJo again, and JoJo just walks away with 150 HP still remaining. So really nicely done to save that. Here you're kind of seeing it going down live, the over-the-shoulder cam from JoJo. Yeah, now we're looking at a case where it does start to get really difficult um, for energy here, considering how much gold Cloud9 have gotten on their Azir, on their Varus. Powell Fox, though, is still really fed to Leah. Uh, and he does have nine stacks Dark Seal. You mentioned that he just finished his Crypt Bloom, and he should be able to finish, you know, a Banshee's Veil next or something. Unless he just wants to sit on the Vernant Barrier, since they did buff that component as well. But... Maybe maybe it's a like upgrade to Medjai's angle. <laughs> yeah. And really go for it. I mean, if you fully stack your Dark Seal and it's 10 stacks, the, the value of upgrading into Medjai's is so big. But then, I mean, if you upgrade it and then you immediately Don't die, die. Don't die. lose all 10 pages, Don't die. where'd your value go? Where'd your value go? Okay, I can, I can respect it though. If you feel like, okay, the game's starting to slip we gotta away, win. we gotta make big uh, plays, I'm the only one who can do it, sure. Maybe, but then again, you're going to get flamed if you die, if you lose the pages. Let's see. We don't have, uh, don't have any additional updates right now. We do. I'm curious the same way that you are, Kobe. Is he going to just go ahead and complete the Banshee's Veil? Or also do you just hit something, you know, Medjai's death cap, whatever. Just something turbo damage focused <laughs> to try to guarantee that you get that instant burst. Because the biggest issue for me throughout this game for energy has just been the coordination hasn't felt right. Whether it was the early dive where, okay, contracts is going back in, but it looked like we probably should have all just walked away or all committed. When they tried to make the pick on JoJo in the jungle, but he just barely gets out. Even back in mid lane when there's that slight delay on the follow-up of the contracts LT, there's just a little bit that's not quite there for energy this game. All right, got an update. We're, we're rushing a new keyboard over now. Okay. Emergency substitute keyboard. David has the keyboard. Chat, send your energy to David. Running it over as quickly as possible now. Yeah! yeah. yeah. We're back into wow, the game. That was really fast. They, they must fast. have sent a lot of energy. Yeah, that was a bunch. Okay, <laughs> we're back into the game now. 24 minutes in. Slight gold lead for energy, but you would expect that to swing back into the favor of C9 since, like you pointed out, Kobe, they still have the Baron on multiple players. Okay, got to refocus after the pause. That was the biggest thing. Even Blabber himself was talking about last time when Cloud9 had the big pause, he lost focus. <laughs> we'll see if... Uh, honestly, it's not too bad if a Sejuani, this Fed, actually loses focus. He's so tanky, and he's got the regeneration from his Warmog. So Cloud9 have the ability with Baron buff to push up multiple lanes, and they have really good face checkers here in Blabber and Fudge. They're going to push out mid and then rotate basically everybody over. Yeah. Having the Bard makes it so much nicer for your side. A lot uh, a lot more options here with those tunnels. General observation about the map state too. Hold on, TP's coming in. Energy having to disengage now as Blabber misses the Sejuani ulti. Chains of Corruption also miss. C9 saw what looked like maybe an angle, but they cannot execute successfully. So Energy just walks off from that one. Worth pointing out, C9's got this Baron buff for a little bit over another minute. Once it expires, it'll be about 60 seconds from then until the Drake. So C9 does have the opportunity to set up the Rift for an advantageous position. Remember, with both teams already at two Drakes apiece, the next one's going to be soul point for someone. Who he jumps in, the Abyssal died, but nobody else is close enough to do a lot, especially not with Fudge being the only one here on the front line. Even though Cloud9... Uh, you know, miss the Sejuani ults from good evasive maneuvers from Huhi, and then he flashes the Varus ult. Cloud9 still get an isolated outer turret for JoJo for this Azir that is working on Death Cap, which scales so well considering you added the Lich Bane with another yeah. AP ratio onto him. So JoJo approaching three core for JoJo and for Berserker. Energy, they got to start feeling the pressure here. They're, they, they might start feeling a little desperate. We might see another one of these super deep aggro plays from them. Contracts has flash, Palafox has flash. 
They, they really need to make good on one of those picks and try and get someone from Cloud9 isolated, get some of those key summoner spells off of the Cloud9 carries. Because if those two are, are just safe, the Azir yeah. and the Varus right now will demolish you. Well, Baron has faded, gentlemen. It is 60 seconds until the Drake spawns. We don't really see a whole lot happening in that bot side river right now. There is currently energy vision controlling it, but a couple of Cloud9 wards on the back side of the pit to also see if energy is trying to make more of an entry into that part of the rap, part of the rift, excuse me, right now. As C9 is more focused on the top side, they've got all five players either in mid or in that top side river area as Jojo is set up to push top lane. They seem really content with farming right now on the Azir. Yeah, look at this. How, how nice is it to have two people shadowing? <laughs> Blabber and Vulcan, the two babysitters to come watch Jojo farm on the side lanes. They're like, please, just eat up a little bit more money here. I'm uh, surprised oh, they didn't want to. Oh. He's going, he's going for Zonia's instead of the death cap here. It's pretty smart versus the Vi, I think. Yeah. It's he, their only win condition. He got the Seeker, so he has an active already for a stopwatch to deny that Cloud9 play. Really smart, or deny that energy play. Cloud9 really Looks smart. Looks like a fight might break out here. Yeah, we got energy on the approach. A TP coming into the mid lane from Palafox, who he's going to be caught by the Bard ulti, but he's the only target. Now he's got to try to tank it up. Senna ult over the top, who he's still at about half HP. Fudge coming in, looking to complete the dive as Berserker goes on a rampage. Go play is thrown back into the team. All out goes Fudge, all in goes Contracts, but he's 1v5. He ain't alive. Ooh. Everybody died at C9. Three for nothing. There you go, right into their hands. They have scaled Cloud9 Protect, and they collect. Dragon number three. That was good, oh, yeah. That was smooth, that was slick. Yeah, I'm pretty sure once the Varus also gets a stopwatch, this game should be over. Yeah, really good. Immediately, immediately use the Seeker's arm guard right after purchasing, but yeah. honestly, they already had the advantage in the team fight here. You know, where they're getting so much free damage on Hal is, is just too far. He TP to the mid tower. He just wasn't close enough for this fight. Yeah, so they get a really big head start in the health bars here. Lots of free damage onto that energy front line. And then, uh, yeah, it was all lost. This game's looking really hard for energy now. Cloud9 currently in the process of bouncing back <laughs> from their super weak losses here. They have been able to stay strong. Can't Zero break death. The streak here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, hey, I was saying I wanted to see Berserker and Vulcan also not have the same kind of mistakes that they had last week. Berserker is currently 4-0 and 4 on the Varus. Blabber in all the losses that C9 had for Superwork, a lot of people were complaining that he didn't have the same level of presence and pressure that you would normally expect from him. 3-1 and 7 here on the Sejuani, only one kill that he hasn't been a part of here for this team. Let's see if this engage works out in mid lane as who he turned into a golden statue once again. They're going to put the burst into the Tom Kench and JoJo sits him down. C9 have picked up one, and the Baron is alive on the Rift. Now Energy are once again tasked with trying to stop it. They now know how fast C9 is at taking this. Blade of the Ruined King Varus plus the Azir. This is so difficult for Energy to stop, but they're making the approach. C9 already have it down to below half HP, down to about one third now. Doklan contracts, they just know they can't approach. All this is going to be is a team fight loss on top of a Baron if they go in for it. C9 still chasing, seeing if maybe they can pick one up at the back end of things. Set up for the disengage. Fudge goes over the wall. Q3 won't hit anybody. Magical Journey don't matter. Pathmaker gets him out. All right. No kills on the back, but C9 is happy to turn a pick into a bear, and never mind, we ain't yeah. done yet. Contract's gonna be caught here with the top. Senna ulti trying to reinforce him, keep him protected, but Fudge does a lot of damage. Contract's still alive as JoJo gets away into the back. Palafox wants to chase, and JoJo's on the run. Palafox goes in, but JoJo shovels him right back. Palafox denied, energy died, and C9 is loving the way this mid game's been going. Doke was trying to get away, but no, sir. Fudge Ooh. knocks him down. And Berserker's ending the game the whole time. <laughs> Berserker's just over here annihilating towers. That's the ADC dream right there. <laughs> <laughs> He's inside the base, so are the rest of Cloud9, and they're going for it. Cloud9 had a rough week last time around, but they're ready to stop that here. Who he is not going to stop anything on his own. The C9 loss streak will grind to a halt as they Ooh. defeat Energy again, 16-8. Jojo wow, gave, that, uh, that game really just cracked open. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They were able to scale 
They were able to play it safe here. Yeah, I was really, bad. yeah, the coordination from Energy was just off, I feel like, this game. Mm -hmm. Energy, Kobe, you said it best. Back at the start, Energy was just giving them stuff. Cloud9 playing well, but playing reactively, not having that pressure on them to have to make things happen, because Energy's just like, all right, we're YOLOing it. Go, 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 bottling, PvP, PvP. And it didn't work out for them. Energy's going to have to really work on the, the coordination if they want to play that crazy, play that out of pocket. But for C9, you got to be breathing a little bit of a sigh of relief. You get rid of all of that losing streak, that bad mental, and you're finally back feeling like, okay, we can execute a little bit. Yeah, they went with a, with a safe style here to get that safe first win, yep. and they're going to go crazy tomorrow. I mean, I hey, man, so. it worked out. You guys were talking about having the front line, having the two damage, the two threat damage comp, and it worked out. The Talia, the Vi, both getting shut down by the time you have that Zonia's Hourglass ready to go on the Azir. Good stuff coming out from C9. And a reminder to all y'all, Fantasy LCS is happening on Sleeper. It's not too late to sign up and start a league with your friends and crush their dreams with your own LCS Super Team. Super Teams, we've seen them go good. We've seen them go bad. How about yours? We're going to see. You can head on over to Sleeper.com or Sleeper.app to give it a try right now. That is our first game of the day all wrapped up. And so it's time to join Emily and Jojo on stage for an interview. Hello, I'm here with the victorious Jojo Pion after C9 kind of stopped their losing streak. So first of all, congratulations. Thank you. I mean, it feels kind of weird winning. I'm not used to this right now, but <laughs> it's a good feeling. Uh, I know in an interview uh, just this past week, you actually talked to Ashley Kong about how losing makes things more interesting. Uh, do you have any comments on that after your first win in a little while? I mean, I think a lot of people, including me, were expecting like C9 to kind of just shit on everyone, this whole split. Um, but I think now that I think about it, if we realize our mistakes right now and we improve, I think that's much better. So I don't think the losses were too bad on how we reflected on it. So. Yeah, and going into this week, uh, what was your preparation like? Like in draft? Yeah. Or, I mean, we tried playing a bunch of new champions because I think our champs were kind of obvious of what we were going to do this week. So I think we're trying to exp expand our champ pool a lot more. So, yeah. Uh, when you look at draft, just because it's something that a lot of the community has pointed out, I have also pointed out and been critical at times. Um, when you're looking at drafting for this team, I think one thing that people are curious about in, is balancing the strength of you all as individual players, which is quite high, with the actual coordination of composition. So how much thought goes into that? I mean, definitely a lot of thought goes into that because every single player in this team can carry, right? Yep. So, I mean, I feel like that's really good. We can make draft really versatile. So that's what we're trying to do right now um, since every player can carry. So yeah. Nice. I, I will still defend the Vayne mid, actually. <laughs> I mean, I thought Vayne mid was good. If I had more practice, I definitely could have carried, but it happened. Nice. We'll look forward to it again in the future, maybe. Um, going forward, uh, looking out at kind of how the C9 team is doing, obviously, you get the win today. Uh, how are you guys going to build on this win towards the future? I mean, it's definitely a good confidence boost that we won today. I think if we lost today, it definitely would not be good. So um, I think we're getting our confidence back. So, yeah. All right. Well, all the best. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. And we'll see you guys back on the other side of the break. Thank you. Hey guys, it's Armeo from Mortals Progressive. Today, me and my teammates are going to be answering questions from this bowl. What type of books do you like to read? I don't even know, because I don't read books. What are you most excited about for the future? Uh, me? I will be rich guy. Whoa! It's okay. Do your heart, your brain, or your god. My brain. I'm so smart. What's on the top of your bucket list? You know, winning LCS, top of my bucket list. I was one game away. It was tactical. 2021. We lost 2-3. It was very disappointing. We were also up 2-1. Dude, why'd you put your new rig in the basement? Didn't you hear? Bill's a good gillionaire now. Basically, my new connection is so strong I can game anywhere. Check it out. We've got Gamer Rocker, Gamer Floaty, Gamer Couch. Whoa. It's got wheels. Gamer Bench, Gamer Throne, and Gamer Mower. What's that? It's hard to game while walking downstairs. I get it. That's smart. Live like a gagillionaire with low latency everywhere. AT&T Fiber with all fi Red.
Red Bull gives you wings. 